Okay, showing up to the property. We thought it was a uh, phase one, but it is actually a phase two inspection. So it's a pre drywall inspection where we come in and look at all the framing, all the electrical wiring, plumbing. Uh, so that's part of working in the real estate market too. Sometimes there is a miscommunication. You know, the client might not know exactly uh, what they ordered or, um, or our office accidentally uh, clicked the wrong button. You never know. So we just kind of roll with the punches. The price difference is minute, so we won't even charge the client anything different. And we will just roll with it because you got to remember there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of things happening all at once. So let's see. I'll show you some of the things that we find on a phase two inspection. Okay, here's the first two finds. The first one, you, they need a fire block, the uh, garage. So you need some fire foam up here. And then also you can see the framing is a little warped and it's bowing out of place. So they just need to add additional support uh, on inside the garage. The next find is right here. You can see the uh, main water supply line is a little loose. So we're gonna recommend to re-support the water line so you don't get any knocking uh, in your master bedroom whenever you, someone operates the plumbing. Next find is a little small, but you can see that the, uh, the outlet is crooked and it'd be pretty hard to adjust it once the sheetrock goes in. So we're gonna recommend to straighten the uh, two, this two by four here so you get a, a straight outlet. Here underneath the window, you can see that there are some gaps in between the framing. Sometimes this can cause settling or cracking, so we're gonna recommend to shim right underneath this window. In the uh, master bathroom area, we have another loose water line, uh, pretty minor. It actually looks like it was attached at one point in time, but it may have popped off, so uh, pretty good find. So in the for the panel box, you can see all the wires are perfectly spaced, which is nice. But right up here, uh, you need a nail plate to help protect the wires whenever they install the drywall. So uh, this is not too common of a find, but you can see they have a nail plate behind it. And thank you for whoever left the comment. They are not striker plates. They are nail plates, apparently. Okay, coming outside, you can see the, the brick ledge here. And then there's also brick ties and they need a poly barrier. Yeah, the inspector before us did find it and did label it, but we will add it into our report too. A poly barrier allows the uh, the concrete and the brick kind of expand and contract at different rates and it allows the, uh, the brick and uh, concrete to move and helps prevent cracking. So you do need a, a poly barrier over here. Here we'll just recommend for tape improvements. They did add out add kickout flashing, which is great. So we're gonna just recommend to help better tape this location. And same thing here, uh, just recommend a little bit of tape around uh, this location where the the home wrap is uh, torn. Right here, if you're wondering what kind of tape we're talking about, you have two different types of tape that would work. Uh, and this tape is actually done correctly. You can see it's installed in a manner where it can uh, shed water. So they always install the side first and then add the top. This is a common find. You just find little uh, holes and whatnot. We just recommend to tape it. Pretty common find. Oh, here's a, here's a good find. Oh, they may have already found that too, but there's no pan flashing uh, in these windows. They need to install the pan flashing before they install the windows. Yes, we know they're not done, uh, but we always like to document it to help remind the builder or the contractor that will see our report uh, before they move forward in the process. So looking at the neighbor's window here, you can see they have some overhead flashing. Well, they actually need flashing here too as well. Um, unless that is a self-flashed window we actually have no idea if they are or not so what we do is we document that the uh the flashing is missing so you can see here um pull this back just a little bit you can see here uh they, they'll normally put like some sort of z flashing above this window during this phase but uh they they've been it looks like they're doing it during the siding install of the hardy so we're, we'll recommend it being there but we'll also put a note in place saying hey these might be self-flash windows and it might not be needed and 
it'll kind of give the builder leeway so the builder doesn't have to argue with the client if it's there or not the builder will could respond to say hey those are self-flash windows and they're not needed and then your client is prepared and knowledgeable saying oh, okay yeah the inspector said that this was already found too but you can see um the bow and normally builders or the builders inspectors do little squiggly marks and arrows so they did find it already they're going to work on it but we put it in our report too to help uh, remind them about the um, about the find that their inspector found one of the other things uh walking up here if you could see in the attic space the uh, ridge vent is blocked off and there's no soffit vents on the structure so this is um this is a good a reputable builder and we work with these people pretty often and they always foam in the attic space so you just want to keep in mind you know you don't want to write up something saying hey there's no ventilation in the attic whenever you know that they're going to foam this thing but you can actually feel it just standing up here it's really hot even though it's like 90 degrees outside but if there was ventilation in this attic space it would actually be pretty cool in the upstairs so um just keep in mind before you write something up and send your client into a spiral that uh have an idea of maybe how they're going to insulate the attic before you write it up all right last quick find here and um, they probably just haven't got to it yet but they just haven't installed the air register so yes we know this is not finished 100 percent, but it's more of like a punch list too for the builder so Whenever they hand it over, they're like, oh, yeah, we're working on that. But it'll help remind them about what they need to order. Another common find, though, Nick, moving on the topic, they're missing a striker plate here. They have striker plate, striker plates, J hangers. <laughs> Sorry, they're missing a J hangers here. You got a J hanger here, J hanger here. But then they are missing one in this location. And whenever you look at the J hangers, you want to make sure there's a nail for every hole for them to be installed correctly. So uh, pretty good little find there. Missing J hanger and a missing air register. Okay, headed to uh, Josh Gibson. That was just a quick walkthrough. I'm sure there are some other little things that maybe one of the other inspectors may have saw. And if you did, throw in the comments, you know, help the channel learn, help me learn if I, if I missed it on the first quick walk through. Tyler's gonna spend another hour and a half there uh, documenting everything he finds and then he uh, will um, get the reports of the client and review it. So let's head over to Josh Gibson on the other new build and see what we find. Oh, also one thing, I know that's probably seemed like a lot, but actually this is a really good one. It, that, that stuff that we found are pretty minor and a builder could probably get that fixed all in a day. So. Uh, pretty good phase two over here and uh, let's see what Josh Gibson's finding on that other new build. Okay just pulled up to these uh, new builds here and you can see here you got these track homes getting like three four in a row and we're running into this a lot I'd say over the past five years it's just pretty much every new build in the area. Here's Josh. What's up man? <laughs> so um, pulling up and uh, we'll see what we find. Uh, coming into this one and I'm going to show you one thing that I just spotted right here that relates to the first video first house for the inspectors this is actually how we like to set up in the kitchen we like to display all our tools with the infrared camera out I know you've seen this a few times but you have all the cabinets open and this is part of like the presentation of when the client first walks in they get to experience, you know, oh, these, this, this is what I paid for. You know, this is what uh, I'm getting, they, it's perceived value. So yes, all of y'all are probably doing the same thing with all your tools put up and closed away, but it's about how the client feels whenever they walk in the property. You know, uh, they walk in, they see the tools, they see the setup, they see everything running, they see everything open. They get the idea that you're working and you're here working for them. Okay, this is what I was talking about earlier. I uh, kind of explained it wrong first. So you actually need the flashing above the window only. So, you know, the other builder, he put it above the trim board and the other windows, they didn't have any flashing above the window at all. So this is exactly how it's supposed to be. And uh, you can look that up in the Hardy manual. 
And then also a lot of builders, what they do is they send the hardy plank behind the trim and lay the trim on top of the uh, the actual siding. This is exactly how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be butted up to uh, the um, the trim board there. So this looks this looks pretty good. Oh, in the bottom as well. This is correct. Where the joints are going down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Instead of going. Across. Yeah. So yeah. What they'll do is they'll lay the trim all the way across here. The, the trim board's supposed to go all the way down, so just the uh, the siding can shed the water properly. So this looks really good. Got the bottom piece, the long piece on the side. That looks really nice. This is a this is a look, good looking house so far. So Josh spotted this walking around the exterior of the structure, and you can kind of see how how crooked <laughs> the uh, the post is there. So yeah, if you can kind of compare it to the door there, how crooked the uh, support post is in the back. So uh, we're gonna write that up and recommend that they repair it. A good sign about how this hardy is installed too as well you can see this transition right here between the the uh, the hardy plank and then it runs into this transition and they added in z flashing there so that's exactly how it's supposed to be installed and it's going to shed water properly you're going to write this up often pretty too uh pretty much too no one ever does it but this should be actually installed on like hardy block and then there should be a z flashing above it but no one in Houston installs it. I think I've seen it one time and it's over there by the uh, the townhouse that we purchased. And yeah, another thing that we always do is uh, we'll go through and we'll test all the AFCIs. You said it was this one? This one right here. This one? Yeah, and you can see that the AFCI is already broken. Pretty common find on every year of property. So I uh, recommend to replace it. And then also there's no GFCI for the dryer in the dryer space and now it's code to have a gfci on the dryer so we write that up too as well i'm going to try to get this in the video but this looks like the thermal pane has uh lost its seal let's see if i can get the get it to focus here it's really hard for these to show up um, in the video but you start to see like streaking in the glass right here and this is a this is a brand new back door, and I don't even know how much this thing costs. So if the thermal paint is out, it should fall under some sort of warranty or they can get it replaced before they move in. Okay, that was a uh, quick walk through on the new build. A uh, few things, a few important things that could cause them some serious headaches down the line, especially this thermal paint that's lost its seal. Uh, that's crazy expensive. You know, they probably wouldn't even find that till next summer after that one year warranty is up and that's probably the cost of its the inspection by itself that door so um good finds we actually i'm actually headed to a marketing dinner after this with acc so that's going to be fun so uh keep watching catch us on the next one and i'm going to do my best to post weekly for you guys i'm going to do it i'm going to do it all right see you guys bye